This channel is supported by Truefire. Truefire is an online library of lessons from some of my favorite players. There's thousands of lessons on there. You can use the promo code JNC40 to get 40% off of any of their courses. this video I wanted to put together and share with you actually what I think are my favourite tones that I've got in this kind of 80s clean genre. I watched a, a quick interview or uh, something with Steve Luther. I think at the time there were a few guys that were responsible for this sort of stuff ending up on records. Luther was one of them, Landau was another. I think Bradshaw and his effects kind of rack systems was a big part of the sound. Shout out to Sean Murray because in the initial preset that I built this off of was like the 1975 clean. I used a few tips from his video on the 1975 cleans, so go check that one out as well. If you want this preset, uh, leave a comment below and I'll drop it into the folder. Um, let me know if you've got other things that you use to get this kind of tone, but certainly not a thing that you're going to use all the time, but for that kind of really polished 80s clean aesthetic, that kind of crystal clean stuff i think this could get you in that ballpark hopefully so the 80s was all about the massive rack wasn't it we all know that you've got pamela anderson you've got baywatch and you've got 80s tones right um was baywatch even in the 80s i'm not sure um <laughs> Anyway, right, so this tone is going to be pretty critical that you're monitoring in stereo and listening in stereo. Otherwise, there's a whole bunch of things that are not going to work super well. Uh, as you collapse this sort of thing to mono, it starts to sound a little bit weird. But I think the same would also be true of actual kind of tones in the 80s that were, in some cases, heavily modulated. And in some cases, making use of what's called the Haas effect. Um... <laughs> So, the very start of this preset, I don't think we've got a gate on. We do have a gate on. This may or may not be necessary, but I guess if you're um, playing with a single core, you may want to leave this gate on because otherwise it's going to be quite noisy, potentially. Or maybe not, but anyway, yeah, optional gate. Then a three-band compressor. So this is a multi-band compressor. I've got the ratio at 12 to 1, extreme. The attack at 35, the release at 199, the low cross frequency at 312, the high cross frequency at 1.4, level at plus 3, uh, low threshold minus 40.6, low gain at plus 12, mid threshold at minus 50.5, mid gain at 11.8, high threshold at minus 55.9, high gain at 6 dB, 
So I think what you'll see is that the high gets compressed more. Maybe the mid get the most compression. Anyway, without that, you'd get this. So it's bringing a bit of life and also squashing things a lot. Now we go into the US double vibrato. So this is the bright channel of a Fender Twin. Drive at 2.9, uh, bass at 5, mid at 7.3. I say bright channel, I mean the vibrato channel. Treble at 6.5, presence at 3.9, and sag at 5.8, ripple at 3.3, etc. Then going into a dual cab, so we've got the 414 condenser on a 2x12 male C12Q, 2.5 inches away, high cut at 16, early reflections at 16, level at plus 6, and then 121 ribbon, 2.5 away, 16 kilohertz, early reflections at 24, and level at 6 dB. If you're finding this a bit too bright with your guitar, High cut might be the first place that I would try experimenting with, uh, you know, bringing that down to around eight or so, or even lower. Now we go into the 70s chorus, which is based on the Boss uh, CE1, is that right? And uh, this is throwing things into stereo. So we've got the rate at 1.6, chorus mode, vibrato rate seven, vibrato depth five, but that won't be affecting things. Spread at zero. And stereo mode is at classic, mix at 50%, headroom plus 12, and level at plus 1. Without this, you'd get... Okay, and then we've got this, which is a slapback digital kind of thing. So for this, I've got a time at 1 16th, fairly short delay anyway. Uh, feedback 21%, 16 bits depth, 22.5 kilohertz sample rate, mix 19, and the rate and depth 2.2, headroom at plus 12, scale at 75% so that we get a little bit of left and right stuff, and trails off. Um, then we're going into a 63 spring, and the settings for this I think are from Sean Murray. Super low decay, 0.1, pre-delay 34, high cut 7.5, low cut, and then the mix is at 4%, and that's what you get for that. Then we're going down to this bottom path here, path 2A, and we end with the Trinity Chorus in stock settings. <laughs> really gives a lot of that sparkle we're using the manual mode anyway so you don't need to worry about the settings and then I've got this vintage digital um, which sometimes is on for a bit more of the dreamy And this preset really likes the in-between positions. But yeah, that's what we got going on here. 500 milliseconds, feedback 76, bit depth all the way up to full. 22% mix, rate and depth standard, scale down to 70% and the headroom at 12 dB. So this, I think, would be a really nice place for, for trying to get some of these 80s rhythm tones started. Let me know if you get on with those okay in the comments. You could, if you're finding things a little bit on the lively sound uh, side, put a compressor at the end and this might even...
just squash things down and make it even more manageable. That's not what I was using on the introduction there, um, but if you want to try that out, copy those tones there, and uh, I'll catch you in another video soon. Let me know how you get on with those. Um, let me know if you've got other effects that are your go-tos for this kind of tone in the Helix, or other amps. I think the Jazz Chorus is a great shout as well, um, the straight, straightforward twin. Um, just anything that stays super, super clean would be, I think, the best bet. And maybe even no amp at all. Nope. Right, I'll catch you in another video soon. Cheers.